Well, hi friends. Uh, it's been so good to be with you this weekend and to get the privilege of preaching at the Sunday morning service where we talked about this wonderful message uh, that really comes from the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 4. We have this treasure in jars of clay. And uh, we talked about the contrast between the treasure that is the life of God within us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then we talked about the jar of clay, which is about our humanity and the fragility of our humanity, the fact that we are broken people, basically, because of the fall, that we all have a history where um, we've all experienced degrees of brokenness and the consequences of sin and living in a fallen world and all of that impacts the jar cracks the jar and wears the jar but the fact is god puts his presence who he is in that weak frail vessel uh, in our humanity and paul says there's a very simple reason for that so that the excellency of the power or the surpassing greatness of god's power may be of him and not of us in other words, God wants us to live in such a way that we draw attention to him more than we draw attention to ourselves. And, and Paul sort of outlines four things that he went through, which we unpacked this morning. And, you know, there are sort of four key words, really, um, where he, he experienced pressure, he experienced perplexity or confusion. He experienced rejection and he experienced setbacks, you know, getting knocked down but not knocked out. And, and so my sort of question to you as, as a group of believers, uh, when you meet tonight and you look at this text and you look at your life, is to what degree are we making the treasure manifest? Sometimes we manifest it personally like Jesus did. So when he was in the boat with the disciples and Jesus was fast asleep, and a storm came along and the disciples were trying to manage the storm until they got to a point where they realized this is actually a, a life threatening gale that we're in right now. These were experienced fishermen. So they knew how to read the signs of a, of a, a wind and a storm. They, they knew when it was OK to navigate and they knew when it was beyond safe. And right at that moment when they realized, gosh, we could die in this storm and Jesus is fast asleep. They woke him up. They woke him up. And they said the words, Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? And then Jesus simply rose and it says he spoke to the wind and the waves. And the words were, peace, be still. And suddenly the wind and the waves were calm. And the apostles looked at this and they said, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? But I think the thing about that story that fascinates me is when Jesus spoke the word peace be still actually what he was declaring was what he was living in other words Jesus was at peace in himself they were not at peace they were stressed they were anxious they were confused they were all those things Paul talked about in 2 Corinthians 4 but Jesus had something within him that brought peace to his heart because he knew that they were getting to the other side. And so when he spoke, what he was doing was releasing the treasure. He was releasing what he was carrying, which was the peace of God. And so when we talk about the treasure in our lives, you know, Paul talks about in Galatians 5, the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. So it's love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, faithfulness. Um, and Paul listened, the nine fruit of the Spirit. And so the Spirit of God, the treasure within, wants to cultivate that fruit in your life so that when you're in a situation that demands you to be peaceful or demands you to be humble or demands you to be gentle or demands you to be joyful, when the situation is demanding that of you, the treasure within you that has cultivated the fruit of the Spirit is able to release that from you. So that's at a personal level, but it also works at a corporate level where together, so Paul and Barnabas were in the jail at midnight and they sang hymns together. They praised God together. And as they were praising God, the joy of the Holy Spirit, despite their pain, despite their circumstance, the joy of the Spirit was welling up and they gave praise to God. And in that situation, it released God's activity on their behalf. And so I want to encourage you, 
we all experience these different things. We all experience pressure. We all experience confusion. We all experience rejection from time to time. We all experience setbacks. But, but God wants the treasure within that is able to persevere, is able to bring hope, is able to, to bring his presence, and it's able to bring resilience. I think if we cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, we're able to match and deal with the situations that we find ourselves in. And so my encouragement to you as you meet together tonight, as you talk together and consider this passage of Scripture, is just to ask yourself some simple questions. Where are you feeling the pressure and what are you doing to deal with it? You know, are you pressing ahead? Are you persevering? Or are you feeling crushed? Because Paul says, yes, we're under pressure, but we're not crushed. Uh, there is this treasure within that's manifesting itself. Are you feeling confused, perplexed? You, you don't understand fully what's going on. That's okay. You're allowed to do that. What you're not allowed to do is to give up hope. And so my question to you is, okay, are you confused? If, you are, if the answer is yes, then the next question is, do you have hope? Is your future rooted in the promise of God that is alive in your heart? Or are you somebody who's going through so much confusion right now that everything has gone out of the window and you've forgotten about your destiny, you've forgotten about your call, you've forgotten about what lies ahead, you know, no good thing shall he withhold from those who walk uprightly. God has a plan and a purpose. The difficulty is that between the promise of God and the fulfillment of God's promise, there's this gap that we walk through and it's, it's a walk of faith. God has called us to do that. You could ask yourself, well, are you, are you experiencing rejection right now? If you're somebody who's been laid off from work, you know, that, that's a rejection of some kind. That's basically saying other people are more valuable than you are. And how are you handling that? Are, are you able to, to know that God is with you in that moment? And perhaps God took you out of that situation working for that organization to reposition you to work for another organization where perhaps you're going to get a better salary or better opportunity or better promotion. You just never know. And so my question is, are you connecting to the presence of God? And just try and be honest with yourself. Because after this meeting tonight, there's the opportunity for you to ask somebody to pray for you and say, you know what, I need to recapture that sense of God's presence. I know in my life, when I want to bring the presence of God into my life, I always default back to worship. I usually put on my iPad, I usually choose a worship song from someone like Bethel or someone like Hillsong, something like this, a song I can really connect to. And I start to worship God and I, I sense God's presence coming to me in those moments when that happens. Perhaps another question you could ask yourself is, well, have you been knocked down? Is there a setback in your life? And what are you going to do about that setback? Are you going to give up? Are you going to stay down? Or are you going to build resilience into your world and into your life and press ahead. So just a few thoughts about the message on Sunday, a few questions that you can ask one another, and then take the time to pray for one another because we all need help on this journey if we're to do life well with Jesus and if we're to make Jesus manifest in our mortal flesh. Remember, it may feel like death working in you because we die to something but we believe in a God of resurrection. And so life is going to work in others, even though we might be delivered over to death. It's for Jesus' sake, so that his life can be seen in this world that desperately needs it. Father, bless everybody who's watching this and let their conversation tonight and their questions and their answers lead them to a place of peace and confidence in you as the God who knows and understands all things and will lead them into their destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, friends.